You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts. Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, along with Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian and Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Venazzi from OptionPit.com. And now, get ready to hit the Option Block. All right, everybody. That music means it is time once again For the Thursday edition of the Old OB, a.k.a. your bi-weekly source for all things options related, my name is Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as, of course, from the ever-exciting, at least we tend to think so around here, the Options Insider Radio Network. Once again, glad so many of you are getting a lot of value, a lot of joy, a lot of fun. We see all your comments over there from the Options Insider Plus and Options Insider Pro. If you haven't checked it out yet, you want to learn more, theoptionsinsider.com slash plus or slash pro. Pick your poison. You can go to slash shop. It'll show them both kind of side by side for you there as well. If you got any questions, of course, hit us up. We are here from you. We also like to hear your questions about all sorts of other fun things. So keep hitting us up. You folks are not shy with your questions and your comments, and we do love to hear from all of you folks out there let's see who we're hearing from on the program today let's first go out to the quiet and tranquil hinterlands of this here old chicago where we are joined once again by the unclest of mike's mr uncle mike tussaw from st charles wealth management uncle mike welcome back to the program sir great to be here as always i believe this is our last show for thursday for the month of june time's flying yeah, you probably are right. <laughs> you are always up on the calendar there. You're like Calendar Man from Batman. You always know when the next uh, next big event is coming over here on the show. And also joining us, doesn't get that reference probably either. He's not really a, a wrestling, as we've learned, or really an 80s guy. Probably not a comic book guy. Who knows? Who knows what the pop culture vein is that pleases the rock lobster? But he is none other than Mr. Andrew Gibonazzi. From OptionPit.com by way of Carmen Line Capital, by way of a vol newsletter here or there. And maybe, who knows, maybe, maybe, maybe if he asks nicely, we'll let him pop up on Options Oddities again tomorrow. Mr. Rock Lobster, welcome back to the program, sir. It is good to be back. It is, uh, well, it, it's always good to be back. It's good to be back to uh, talk to you to see what's going on in the world of options. Oh my gosh, who knew? World of Options. Who knew indeed? The World of Options. What a crazy, just wondrous, mystical, sometimes weird place. Let's break it all down. It is time for the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for the trading block. All right, everybody, let's do it. Let's dive on into what is lighting up our tapes and our screens out here today and seems like market liking what it's seeing liking what it's hearing out there most of the major indices firmly in the green S&P playing the rear laggard role today only up about two-thirds of a percent the Nasdaq up about three-quarters of a percent the Dow closing in 
on a full percentage point. What's got everyone all in a tizzy? Well, it seems like we finally have a deal on the much ballyhooed infrastructure plan. Will they? Won't they? Will it be? I think Biden initially wanted 2.2, 2.3 trillion. Ends up getting around half of that. Seems like around 1.2 trillion. Standard negotiating procedure. You come out with something you know you're not going to get, and then you whittle it down till it's something people can live with. And there you go. The market likes a whole bunch of new spending, <laughs> which is interesting because we have been hearing all these rumors and all these warnings of late about inflation and the very real impacts of it going on out there in the marketplace. And so it is interesting that this, uh, this news of new spending is met with such optimism. Yet here we are. That's what's lifting a lot of the markets. Of course, you can go to the old standby of more buyers than sellers. Whatever floats your boat out there. All that green on the screen means vol. Taking a bit of a break. We got Vix Cash, Mr. Rock Lobster. You were close. You were only about a week off. You called for a 15 handle last Friday. We instead got it today. A 15 handle in Vix Cash today come into showtime. We had a Vix at about 15 and three quarters. So yes, shy of the 16 handle listeners. Is this a blip? Is this kind of where we're heading going forward? Are we, dare I say it, heading back? To the Val Doldrums, the Val Nader of 2017. Let's hope not. Let's hope we got a little bit more juice <laughs> on the horizon. Either way, that's a big move down about two and a half points from our show on Monday. VVIX, aka the Val of Val, also coming in a bit. It's bound about 107 and a half when we kicked off the show. It's down about exactly 15 points from where it was on Monday's show. VXX, a product that loves to erode, breaking the 30 handle. Yes. Listeners, you know, I put on some some BXX put flies towards the end of the day on on Friday last week, and it was kind of a joke. We were like, "This, this is guaranteed." The vol is going to explode as a result, and what we saw is actually the opposite: some nice, healthy, juicy downside for a while. Then now getting down to the below the thirty strike, which is interesting. That means we have once again shed about ten points, so about a quarter of the value of this name that just reverse split. What was it a month ago? Now <laughs> already shedding twenty five percent. Of that value, 29 and a half kicking off the show here today. Listen, is there more to come or is it right back up again? I guess we'll see. What do you guys think? Hit us up. Let us know. And Vol Q, a.k.a. the at the money vol of the NASDAQ 100. Once again, getting squeezed a bit down to about a 16 coming at the start of the show. That's pretty low. It was 22 and got down to 20 very briefly, but it has been pretty high for a while now down about a 16 out there in NASDAQ land as well. So not a huge chasm. Between VIX and NASDAQ vol coming into showtime. So interesting. Again, kind of reflecting the fact that there isn't a huge gulf in the holdings between the S&P and NASDAQ, at least the top big names that move the market. Not a lot of daylight between those two these days. Uh, vol Q's down about one and a half points from where it was this time on Monday. So a lot to unpack there. Let's go in the order of the way that we came because it is an Uncle Mike type of day out there. Uncle Mike, sir, what is lighting up your tape in this lots of green on the screen kind of day? Well, never before in the history of the entire stock market has there ever been a better time to sell than today. Uh, we have new all-time highs in the S&P, so today's an exciting day, like it always is whenever we have new all-time highs. And uh, With that, uh, I will say this with a caveat as to my previous statement, I ain't selling. <laughs> so um, I think that uh, with where we are... Um, What's going to be interesting about the movement of this market uh, in relation to what you had said on the macro news, what Mark had just said a second ago on the macro news, of uh, we have a deal, it looks like, with the infrastructure bill. Uh, we're in a tough spot right now, but we could be at a great spot about maybe five, ten points higher. And what I mean by that is, is that on um, June 15th, uh, just nine days ago, seems like a long time ago, but June 15th, <laughs> Excuse me, allergies bugging me. On June 15th, we were at similar levels as to where we are right now. Uh, market proceeded to not do so hot the rest of last week. And then this week, it's kind of been on a tear. Now, if we are going to go much higher, I know I'm going to state the obvious real quickly. Uh, we do have to get through the levels we are right now. Uh, I know what I stated was similar to someone saying, I'm going to score 10 points or 20 points, whatever comes first. <laughs> so, um, So, yeah. I think that with where we are in this marketplace, we did have a nice looking V bottom type of thing over the course of the last nine days. But where we need to go to break out of this is where we are right now. And we need a little bit more push to the upside. And so the concern with which I have for the market is that 
the infrastructure bill did not push this uh, significantly higher than where we were nine days ago. However, we are still pretty close to it, and this is a level with which if we can break through it, uh, I think that we can really do a lot of great things in this marketplace. So that's where we are from a technical standpoint. Uh, the other things with which I'm looking at that are lighting up my tape, if you will, uh, bonds. Uh, we're holding pretty steady at the 1.49 percentage level for the 10-year note, or the 10-year yield, I should say. Uh, we have not had a lot of movement in the bond market. And with that, when we do have a pretty nice rally like that, it is somewhat concerning that we aren't dropping in the bond market. So I guess the question becomes, well, where is this money coming from? Uh, well, it's definitely not coming from silver. Uh, it's not coming from a lot of commodities. Commodities are up slightly on the day. And so when looking at this, it's kind of like when I had said a week ago when markets and when everything is down, a lot of times things correct themselves because money has to be coming from somewhere. Uh, the concern that I do have right now is the fact that we aren't getting a lot of downward movement in the bond world uh, or the commodity world. So this could just be more money coming into the market that was in mattresses and savings accounts and things like that. But uh, I think that there is cause for concern from the standpoint that we're about at the levels with which we were nine days ago. And uh, we could we, we, we need to have a little bit more of a push before we really are in new all-time high, secured new all-time highs, if you will. So uh, right now, for sure, enjoying this. I'm long a lot of deltas right now, and I intend to stay that way. But just have the understanding that this is a pretty key level with which we need to break through uh, to go up further. And uh, that is what's lighting up my tape today. Thank you for that, sir. Let's go on out now to the dark and stormy shores of Maine. We are joined by the ever gloomy, ever downtrodden, but always focused on volatility, Mr. Rock Lobster. Mr. Rock Lobster, sir, what is lighting up the tape of you and your best friend, Vol Man, sir, these days? Well, uh, I'm with Tucson. I'm not selling either. What the heck? I'm, I'm just, I'm looking at the, you know, it's always fun to look at green. Green, green, green. Um, yeah, last week I thought we would see 15, and then we had that, you know, quite quite tough talk by the Fed chairman or one of the many. Remember, we uh, we kind of debated this on Thursday. Speak with one voice and stop changing your mind, you, you ding-dongs. So anyway, and now the market basically is ignoring all that, uh, from what I can tell. Um, so... Uh, where does that leave us? Uh, it leaves us with, if we closed here, this would be a pandemic low for VIX. Um, still not as low as Vol could get with an all-time high, but SPX keeps kind of powering along here, 4270. Um, and uh, I did dump some Vol puts today. Uh, and I just kind of like, I basically take my Vol positions and sort of relayer them as uh as the market goes higher and vol goes lower. Um, but um, so all I can say is that, again, you have the action that you expect to see. Uh, just a couple of the things that are the kind of what I would call the lingering issues for vol. Um, at least I think right now, unless I'm mistaken, I'm seeing uh, SIBO live vol. I'm seeing vol below about a, right at 100. So this is um, the first time that I can remember for a while. Like I'm seeing the July 21 cycle ball down a full eight points today. And, I, and I'm seeing also how like I own some puts in June or in July and I'm just relative performance. I could see, you know, kind of where the futures are going and how the, so ball's coming in for sure. Um, and now you're, you get to the interesting point of volatility, the fun point, right? Where, um, it goes down and how low it can go. Uh, I think it's easier to trade vol if you kind of always are trying to estimate how low it can go instead of how high it can go because, you know, who knows how high it can go. But um, it's harder to figure out how how low it can go. It really can only go so far so fast, right? So um, interesting, interesting opportunities abound, I think. Uh, maybe to try to press uh, some vol vets for the July cycle. I haven't. I haven't uh, done it yet, but you know now with some sort of bipartisanship, 
Uh, and it sounds like most of the crazy is off the table from what I uh, was reading. So, you know, you know, they're going to get something. They're going to get some health care. They're going to get some whatever, just more <laughs> more spending money we don't have, apparently, which I guess there's used to be one party used to worry about that. But um, even the Democrats used to worry about it for a while. But now nobody cares. So I'm kind of wondering. Uh, what kind of economists they have these days where they kind of create the money out of nothing. Um, but eventually the bond market will correct all of them uh, and it will be a weird day, I'm sure. But at least for today, no. Um, you know, you have global growth. There's still the global growth story is pretty strong. Um, even the Chinese are saying, hey, we need to have more kids. So, I mean, again, that's all growth oriented stuff. Uh, tech, the QQQ is making a new high. I think last year at this time, if I'm not mistaken, it was trading like 190. Let me see. One year ago today, the QQQ was uh, going back one year exactly. And nope, nope, 247. <laughs> so you could have picked up 100 Q points. Heck, you could have picked up almost 50 Q points uh, from the end of May. Um, and I have to say just a side note. So again, I think vol continues to go uh, lower and but you know slowly it kind of drips down here. Um, VIX cash is getting a little bit more ahead of the future. So the front end of volatility is coming in really really fast, meaning the market doesn't think there's a lot of activity. So the short term vol comes in fast, but the back month vol, there's not a reason to sell it yet. We haven't seen that seller. Um, at least the hard seller in a while. So, um, and I will say one thing though that you know I think we mentioned her before. Who's winning today? Kathy Woods. Her RK isn't that her uh, her her uh, flagship fund? I mean, it's it's gained I think twenty five percent in three weeks, back to one twenty five. So, um, I'm. It probably helps that Tesla's gone from six hundred or five fifty to seven hundred dollars again. So uh, that is a big win uh, for her. Not not to the highs of one sixty where it was, but still um, a pretty respectable level um, for that. So you know, I guess green infrastructure means money goes to the number one stock, and that stock is still Tesla. So. Um, but uh, I see a lot like steel, uh, some uh, like uh, commodity sensitive stocks are uh, ripping today. And it's just one of those days where everybody's like looking at growth, looking at growth, looking at growth. And they're buying stocks where things are going to grow. Um, and, uh, you know, it's not going to surprise me to see a 14 handle uh, by tomorrow. So I, uh, <laughs> I said this on Thursday about a 15 handle. I was a week late because the. The Fed was just all, you know, what's, what's funny is they ended up not doing anything anyway, and we got through a 15 handle anyway, but they had to pretend like they're going to be tough on inflation. Everybody knows they got to raise it some. But anyway, it looks like a, a good day to be long stuff, and and that's what we got. So uh, an interesting market uh, nonetheless, without without question. Um, and I agree with two sides. It would be nice to see a little bit of a blowout on the upside here. Uh, of course, it, it's hard to figure out what is the part of the market that's going to take us higher. I mean, Mike might have some comments or you, but I'm like, what, like, what, what's going to get, what is going to go higher? Because tech's already, it's not actually, it's not as overvalued it was in uh, 2000, but my gosh, it's, it is rocking now. Uh, no question. It is rocking indeed. Let's see if the rest of the market can rock right along with it. VIX, eh, not really rocking at about 191,000 contracts as of a few minutes ago. The ADB is also ticked down as well. It's back below 500K, listeners. It's over 600K not too long ago. Now it's down to 489,000. Doesn't seem like it's going to threaten that today. SPY at about 1.85 million. That ADV is also kind of collapsed out there as well as was well north of four, threatening five. Now it's three and a half million. In the SPY, the S, remember this time last show, S was actually past a million contracts already. It was a very aberrant day. Today, more in the normal category, 583,000 contracts on the tape. The ADB, about one and a quarter million contracts. The Q's at about exactly a million contracts right now. So 
doing a pretty decent paper out there. The ADB, 1.13 million. I got a feeling that's going to tick up after today's numbers. And IWM for the small cap flavor at 207,000. The ADB, 554,000. If you like all things small cap and equities and volatility, stay tuned. Be coming back in about a little, about a little over an hour now. For Twifo, we're going to be joined by the once and future Dr. Vicks. Maybe making uh, more appearances on that show going forward. So if you like all things small cap volatility through the lens of Mr. Rhodes, you're probably going to be enjoying Twifo going forward. So stay tuned for that. Let's break down now the most active. What's going on in the single names? This is kind of really where the madness sinks its teeth in, where we see all the fun joys of the meme stocks and everything else really popping off out there. Cost you about exactly a quarter of a million contracts to break into the top 10. 249,000 to be precise. That gets you to Amazon. Number nine is Softy. So, so far, we've got a pretty standard top 10. 261,000 contracts for Softy at number nine. Number eight, we're breaking out to our first new addition out here. This is TTD. This is Trade Desk. This is an interesting new one out here. Again, we haven't seen these in the top 10 before. They're at number eight with 264,000. Seems like Google has delayed their decision to uh, punt and put away all those third-party tracking cookies. So ad tracking software like Trade Desk getting a lift up nine points today or nearly 14% to about 74 and a half. Good run for them also. A lot of options paper, as you can see. Number seven, another name we haven't seen in quite some time. It's kind of an interesting top 10 today. This is Snap. Remember how they were all the rage not too long ago? Then it seems like TikTok just came along and just cleaned their clock. When's the last time you saw a lot of news coming out of a big, huge viral event coming out of Snap? Or, you know, those spectacles were all the rage. For a while there, they were pretty much a glasses and sunglasses company more than a social media platform. But Snap back at it today, 67 and a half. I'm not sure what's driving them today. More buyers than sellers, it seems like. Up about a little over a point or about 1.5%. And good, though, for 272,000 contracts out there. So a lot of paper on the tape for Snap. Maybe Spectacles making a comeback. I was just talking about those with someone the other day. We were talking about how those vending machines were everywhere here in Chicago for a while. Don't really see those much anymore. Number six, it's our new fan favorite there. It's Wish. 322,000 contracts on the tape. We talked about them a lot on options. Oddities last week. Will they make a return appearance this week? I guess we'll have to wait to find out. This is, of course, Context Logic, a.k.a. one of the newest additions to the meme stock phenomenon out there. Actually selling off a little bit today, off about a quarter of a point or nearly 2%, right about 13 and a third or so out there. But good enough for 322,000 contracts, listeners. Number five, it's our old friend Palantir ticking on up today to 357,000 contracts. Number four and number three is the Symbol Twins. They're back. AMD number four, 468,000. I do think there's a, a little bit of, shall we say, symbol confusion or at the very least advertising. Folks are looking for AMC on their brokerage platform. And maybe they see AMD and they're like, hmm, let me check out that one again. Of course, there's no shortage of action in the chip sector these days as well, which is also contributing to that. But uh, I do kind of wonder. AMD seems to have the resurgence right around the time that AMC did as well. Coincidence? I put it out there to you. AMD, 468,000 contracts today for number four. Number three, AMC, topping its symbol twin by over 100K. 580,000 contracts on the tape for AMC. Number two, yes, number two, listeners, is the Apple, the fruit company out there, 850,000. That means number one, back taking that crown, wrenching it out of the hands of Apple, at least for today, and also kicking AMC to the curb. Say, get the hell out of here, kid. It's Tesla, 1.88 million. It's the most paper we've seen from Tesla in quite some time. Looks like SpaceX. Remember, Tesla is kind of the aggregation of all of Musk's subsidy-oriented companies in, in one fell swoop. And SpaceX is a part of it. It seems like some element of that may be uh, going public, and that could benefit SpaceX, which in turn could benefit oh Starlink. Their Starlink business may go public, and that, of course, could trickle back into Tesla shareholders driving some paper. The stock up a wee bit today, up about 31 points, or about almost 5%, and enough for nearly 2 million contracts on the tape. Let's see where our biases lie today, listeners. Looks like it's actually, it's not going to be AMC. You might have guessed that, but no, not even Tesla. That is not it as well. And it's not even Wish. It's Palantir, listeners. 86% of that 357,000 contracts coming on the call side of the ledger. 
So the AMC is actually low. AMC and Tesla are two of the lowest, 64 and 63% in our top 10. So interesting stuff afoot out here. Let's see what's interesting from an overall earnings vol perspective. Still have some names popping off this week. We had KB Homes yesterday, Darden Restaurants today, Carnival Cruise Lines today, Rite Aid, a.k.a. Rad, a.k.a. one of my favorite tickers, <laughs> FedEx, and Nike today as well. CarMax popping off tomorrow. Let's see what we got reports for. Let's see. FedEx, they are popping off after the bell today. These coming in right before showtime from our friends over there at Orat. So considerate to get it in before the show for you listeners. Uh, 297.37 is where the stock was as of this report. They were pricing in $14.19. In the past, they've moved $20.50. So they've gotten the memo out there pretty hard out there in FedEx. Less vol is more these days. Let's see if Nike also got the memo. 133.10 is where they were as of this report. They were pricing in about five and a half bucks. In the past, they've moved $7.36. So it seemed like the memo got over there to Nike as well. Let's go out to Bed Bath & Beyond. They were a hot one for a little while out there. Let's see if they're still hot. Coming into this report, they were trading $29.31. They were pricing in $4.33 in the past. Get this, they moved $4.05. So a little more vol getting priced into Bed Bath & Beyond. Is that merited? Is it crazy town? Does that weigh live madness? Let us know what you think out there, listeners. In terms of the season, it's pretty much right about where it was last time we checked in on a couple of points higher, actually. It was 72% when we last checked on it. Now it has aggregated out to about a 74%. So if you bought a whole bunch of vol this season, you got back 74 cents on the dollar. Not quite a profit bonanza, but also not quite as blood red as some of the other seasons we have. Even though some weeks this season were pretty bad. Week two, 51%. Week three, 65%. Week, it looks like week six was 62%. So some rough times out there. If we're vol buyers, but overall 74%, not quite a win, but we shall see. We do, I guess then we have some names popping off here, actually. Well, actually, no, I take it back. We have, actually, we have Rad was before the bell. So we actually have some move results reports here as well. These are, these are out of order here. Let's go to Rad first, my old favorite ticker. This was, let's see, they popped off before the bell. They were at 20 and a half. And let's see, they were pricing in that's 11.7%. They delivered 14.1%. So a little bit of outperformance, listeners. Hmm. I won't read into that. We'll just take that for what it is. KB Homes, they were after the bell yesterday. 43.37 is where they went into their announcement. They were pricing in 7%. They delivered 6.9%. So not a lot of ruffled feathers there. Darden Restaurants, the meatballs favorite. They were before the bell today. 135 and a half. They were pricing in 5.5%. They delivered 3.9%. That's more along the lines of what I expect here from some earnings results so there we go we actually have some earnings move results for you there as well as we keep on rolling it is time to unleash that big flaming eyeball known as the eye of sauron listeners it is time for the odd block it's time to break down the most interesting unusual and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by the optionsinsider.com it's time for the odd block all right listeners let's do it Let's unleash that big flaming eyeball. See what the hell it finds for us today. Got some weird ones on the docket, Mr. Rock Lobster. So I hope you put on your weird pants today. Let's kick things off with everyone's favorite, VIP Shop, also known probably as VIP Shop. This is VIP Shop Holdings. This is an ADR out of China. They are a Chinese e-commerce site. So despite their name, VIP Shop, they actually sound like they're Specialize in discount sales. So perhaps a little bit of an ironic name out there. Trading right now, $19.75, up about a buck sixty-five or a little over nine percent. So a good run today for VIP shop. A year ago they were trading 20 and a quarter. So actually it's been an interesting year here <laughs> for VIP shop. They were trading higher a year ago. And then they sold off by October. They got down to about 1480 or so, which was their low of the year. Then they slowly began their rally by November 25th, was trading almost 26 bucks. 
And then they ran hard up to their high of about $46 on March 23rd. And then it seems like they just fell off a cliff because they went from $46 on March 23rd to 28 and a half on March 29th. So cut not quite in half, pretty darn close. And then by the time, let's see, by the time of April 12th, they were trading $26. They tried to rally a little bit again. April 27th got up to about 33. And that was kind of the last of the of the effort it had in it. It's been kind of selling off ever since. Got down to 22 again on May 20th and down to where we got down to 17 and a half, actually, uh, just a couple of, just not even a week ago, but a few days ago before it looks like it has turned around a little bit just in the last few sessions, rallied a couple of bucks since then. But overall, a crazy year, actually down about 2.5% net on the year. And from that apex, from that high of 46, it's been cut more than in half. So a rough year for VIP shop, a.k.a. VIP shop. Obviously, a lot playing into that, of course, the pandemic. There have been a lot of issues with uh, logistics and shipping uh, through a lot of these e-commerce companies as well. So all of this probably playing into what we're seeing out there. And let's see what our I have Sauron found out there today, Mr. Rock Up. Seemed like a bit of a weird one. It seems like, first, my first glance at this, I was like, okay, maybe this is a fly, but because the paper kind of lines up that way. But then we start seeing the, that it's just really the execution makes you kind of question that. So we first noticed a 10,000 lot, 10,000 even of the July 22 is going up for 40 cents, lifting the offer over there on the Philly. That's an aggressive 73% volatility, listeners, for a strike that's over $2, two and a quarter dollars out of the money out there. Then we saw more going up. So that went up at 1120, about eight minutes later. We saw another 8,000 going up for 45 cents. This is now a 73 and a half vol. So the market was 40 at 45. So they were bid out and they said, oh, we'll just take them for 45. And then uh, 8,000 more going up. It looks like about 40 odd minutes later for 30 cents this time. So somehow they got a little bit of a better deal, it seems like, on those, which is strange. That's 92 vol. Obviously, the stock must have sold off there let's see actually no the stock had rallied they somehow got these off for 30 cents so good fill for them <laughs> and then but that wasn't enough so that means a total of about 30,000 of the July 22s have traded today Mr. Rock Lobster but then also the 20 halves came up and caught our eye and the first prints we saw were about 10,000 of the July 22s and about 5,300 of the July 20 halves going up for 55 cents also lifting the offer for about a 64 vol. And then about 10,000 of those have traded. So our first blush was, oh, about 5,000 by 10,000. Seems like it could be a fly. But then you see they're kind of lifting the offers on both of these, which is kind of strange. Makes it looks like a, maybe a bit of a funky strip. And then the size continued for the total, like I said, of 30,000 of the July 22s and a total of 10,000 of the July 20 half. So it could be a total of a one by three, but there's not a lot of selling really on any of these strikes. It seems like they're just getting all the vol they could possibly want. So it seems like Mr. Rock Lobster, and I'd be curious to get your thoughts on this, but it seems like someone really has got to have a lot of upside <laughs> in July in everyone's favorite ADR VIP shop holdings. Is that your takeaway as well, sir? <laughs> um, I, you know, I'm looking at it, and, and there was a period from the middle of June. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine red candles. That's quite a lot. That's quite a lot in the red candle lane, right? Now, the last two days, uh, it's had a, quite a bit of a spike. So I would just read this by, oh, my word, somebody wants these <laughs> July calls. Uh so I'm seeing, again, the numbers always kind of boggle my mind, but we have 31,000 of the July 22s total going up, 10,000 of the 20 and a half. Um, I, 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 you know, what can you say? Just like you just, it's, it's the, uh, it's the, it's the, it's the new stream of paper. Uh, just the public's buying the crap out of these calls. That's all I can say. Balls up. Um, quite a bit. So you know, all I can say is somebody wants this stuff. It's as simple as that. Someone does indeed want this stuff. I'll be checking out some of these uh, crazy upside. Maybe there's some fun opportunities for verticals and things after the show, listeners. But yeah, a lot of paper here. As the Rock Lobster puts it ever so succinctly, 
Someone wants this stuff <laughs> out here in VIP shop. Do you want this stuff? You want to fade some of this? You want to trade some verticals or flies or something else, perhaps against this? Let us know what your thoughts are. This is an interesting one. Hasn't come across our radar before. And uh, this is the kind of paper people tend to gravitate around because it's very near term and it's very aggressive. So folks tend to like that kind of stuff. So we're going to keep an eye on this one. Come back to this one pretty soon because I got a feeling we'll know pretty quickly whether this 45 cent kind and more of these 22s are gonna make it happen yeah this is a lot of bidding up of that upside upside skew there listeners uh, let's see we got a little bit of a different trade coming up next here a lot of newcomers here to the odd block which i kind of like it means some new names make it onto our radar and therefore making it onto yours which is always fun we got hercules capital inc this is, as they put it, the largest business development company focused on venture lending and the lender of choice for innovative entrepreneurs and their venture capital partners. So they lend to VCs, effectively. We're trading right now, 1730 a good run for them, up nearly $7 on the year. They were trading, oh, $10.33 just a year ago and has kind of been straight up almost ever since, a brief Brief blip of a couple of bucks in May where they sold off about 17 and a half to about 16, 15 and change. And they kind of ate that back right up very quickly back up to 1730 where they are right now. So this thing has been looking pretty good. So you might say, OK, this is probably someone similar paper to what we just saw. Gobbling up all the upside. They can't pick a strike. They want them all. Let's just buy them all. Call strip palooza in Hercules Capital. But nay, I say no, that is not what we're seeing out here, it is almost exactly the opposite. <laughs> Someone going out a little bit farther, a little bit longer term and saying, you know what? I have a little bit of a concern. Perhaps I'm concerned that this entire year could be erased. Because <laughs> a year ago, they were trading $10.33. And today we saw someone coming in and gobbling up 5000 which, by the way, is an enormous amount of paper for Hercules Capital. Their ADV is 298 contracts. So a 5,000 lot of anything is enormous. You're talking a couple of weeks worth of paper out there for this name. So it's a lot. So 5,000 lot of the Jan 10 puts going up, obviously, next Jan 2022 for 16 cents. They managed to get them off below the offer, though. They were nickel at 20 cents. They didn't pay. They didn't pay uh, 20 cents. They paid 16 cents. Uh, so the stock was right about where it is right now, 1732. If you're wondering, this is about a 50 volatility out there. Of course, there are earnings between now and Jan. The next one is July 29th. This one is a strange one. Someone coming out, if they did indeed buy these, they shelled out about 80 grand for seven months worth of protection. And I put protection in air quotes because if you have a put that lets your stock get cut pretty much in half and go all the way back to unched on the year, have you really protected anything? <laughs> I think most people would probably say no. So 80 grand they shelled out if they did indeed buy these for puts that are, I think, questionable at the very least out here. Mr. Rock Lobster, what are your thoughts on this? They bought a ton. They bought a couple of weeks worth of volume in one thing. Yet They still got it below the offer, which is kind of interesting. I suppose we could think that someone doesn't say that it was crossed. If it was crossed, I might lean into more of the, hey, a customer wanted to sell it and a desk just bought it to make the customer happy. But we're not seeing that. So if they sold it, they got a hell of a fill. But I definitely like it better that way. I definitely like it better as a line in the sand versus a buy. But what are your thoughts on this kind of interesting, quote unquote, protective put here, perhaps in Hercules Capital, sir? I think you and I would agree that this this would be like a line in the put can side, a line in the sand put candidate, right? I mean, it's this uh, looks just like a line in the sand put to yeah, me, except the for the execution. Puts, but you know, that's a that's a pretty good price they got. You know, the the number is about uh, not quite for our money. It looks a little light, to be honest, because uh, of the size. So usually they they talk they come in around what like seven eight hundred thousand bucks, something like that, somewhere less than a million. Um, and premium. In interesting one here. Yeah. Like, why would you buy the 10 put? You know, I mean, if if not for the, uh, you know, the madness that we had in um, the COVID last year, I mean, this is not really a $10 stock. So I think $10 would be a good place to sell a put, to be honest, in this particular one. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a little, uh, 
I, I am perplexed at this purchase. Uh, <laughs> it's not, I have to say, it's not one of my favorites. I don't think it's really worth going out. Like, you know, if, if I want to put some something, um, I'm not going to go more than 5% out of the money uh, in, for a 30-day duration. I'm not going to go more than 10% out of the money um, in a 60-day in a duration. Because if you buy puts, you either want them to work or what's the point of them? Um, so usually when they're that far out of the money, it's hard to make them really work. Um, so again, odd one. And, and no real, I, I would, I would think, I would think this is line of the sand, but there's nothing, uh, there's nothing here to tell us that it is price wise. No, that's the mystery. That's the rub. I, I gonna hope that it is. They got a great fill on these and they're just saying, Hey, you know, if the stock gets cut in half again, I would buy it and I'll get paid 80 grand for that privilege that I like a lot more. If they actually bought this thing, I mean, you could, I haven't looked at the options chain in in good old Hercules cat I got to imagine you could structure a lot of things that would be much better much more effective from a protection all the way down from 17 to 10 for not that much more outlay than the 16 cents you're paying here and get a much better quote unquote protection so yeah I don't like any of this <laughs> so yeah we're going to take the other side of that we'll come back maybe we'll come back and maybe this guy's on to something maybe he thinks you know Venture lending, maybe that's kind of run its course. Things are kind of rough. Inflation's rampant. It's kind of hard to find new outlets for their capital. Maybe he thinks they're going to get cut in half. But if that's the case, you could still make other trades. That'd be a lot more savvy. But yeah, this one's a weird one, listeners. As we go on out to this name, sounds familiar. I haven't talked about this one in a while, but the ticker symbol certainly is reminiscent. It's a fun, weird one. Yeah, we're going back to C Limited for our final name here, listeners. Uh, this is C, <laughs> call themselves Connecting the Dots. They're Connecting the Dots. This is a Singaporean internet company. And let's see, also a holding company for a football club, Sailors FC, out of Singapore. So a lot of things packed into this ticker symbol C Limited. Trading right now, 291 even. Uh, it has a good year, up 187, so up about 180% over the course of the past year. Today, a good day as well, up about 10 bucks or 3.5%. So a lot of joy on the screen here for C Limited. Let's see, a year ago, it was trading 103.64, and it was kind of pretty much straight up with a few fits and starts all the way up to its apex was actually, well, actually not that far from where it is right now. It hit around 280 back on February 19th, and it seems like it gave it up again. Then it got down to about, looks like, where how low do we get here? About 197, so it broke 200 again. So it sold off not quite 100 handles. We're pretty close to that by March and then it got it all back again by April 26th, was trading 272 again. Then it gave it all up again, got down to, oh, looks like 202. So it's had a couple of fits and starts in this new year. Ever since January, it's rallied and sold off, rallied and sold off. It's been all up previous to that. The previous six months was pretty much all straight up. And now we're kind of in that rally point again. We, went, we bottomed out at 202, and now we're rallying all the way up to where we are today, 291. Is this the beginning of another sell-off, or is this... Another move higher. Well, it looks like, Mr. Rock Lobster, someone in the options market says it's the latter. We're keeping this party rolling. In particular, these are, again, these are optimistic calls. We got the July 320s going up. First off, we noticed a, looks. what is it? Actually, we noticed a 2,000 lot of the 320s going up. Paper lifting the offer for $4.80. So yes, listeners, this is a, an option that is, oh, 30 almost dollars out of the money, trading for $4.80. That's a 44 and a half ball, if you are curious. That one kind of caught our eye, and we said, hmm, that's interesting. Also, there's not even earnings in that. Earnings are August 17th. Then we looked a little bit deeper and saw there actually was a lot more. This call Palooza actually kicked off, looks like about an hour and change before that, with almost 2,000 more going up of the 320s for 330. That's when the stock was a little bit lower, and this ball was a little bit lower, 4330. And they came in, bought 2,000 more. About 15 minutes later, for a little bit, about the same vol, they paid 375 for those. Then they came in about an hour or so later and bought that 2,000 lot we first saw for $4.80. Total of about 7,000 went up on the day. Weirdly enough, the last thousand of it kind of going up in small blocks 50, 30, 20, all kinds of weird prices going up. So maybe this triggered a retail Palooza coming in. Maybe they wanted to get their last one off and fits and starts. Either way, the execution on this was a little bit weird. As well, but what we got, Mister Rock Lobster, net is looks like folks gobbling up about seven thousand 
of the July 320s for prices ranging from about 330 up to almost five bucks and vols in the mid 40 odd percent. That's quite the leg up. It would need to have nearly 30 points. It's got to run, sir, to make those make sense. What are your thoughts here on yet again, optimistic call paper this time in everyone's favorite name, C limited, sir. Um, I have to say this, this one is, is a, this one is a bit, uh, this one is interesting. Um, I am again, uh, looking at a, a, anyway, a, a funky one. Okay. Funky one. I'll just say it's, it's a funky one. Um, and you know, you look at, you look at these charts and I would say in any other years when we have been doing this show. And people buy these out of the money calls, and we would say you're nuts, right? Um, <laughs> uh, famously in the men's warehouse uh, calls, which versus stock, which we will never ever live down, um, or maybe that GameStop was done and Bed Bath and Beyond <laughs> was not. Um, but this is one where, like, it doesn't seem like there's an end to the call buying. In um in some of these names, right? I'm this is one other one, uh seven thousand contracts trade, uh vols going up, stock is going up, the stock is up like what um 80 bucks since the since mid-May, and it doesn't look like there's like there's really any top for it. Um and just I, I th- we've seen so much of this this year. That I, I used to say, I mean, these people are crazy, but, you know, and then tomorrow the stock will be 325 and all of a sudden they're going to look pretty smart. So, um, again, just this uh, this steady call buying and, I mean, we're in a bull market. So, as you know, options love a bull market, calls love a bull market, and that's what we have. So, it's not going to surprise me to see something like this work, even though... We would say most times that calls that are ten percent out of the money that you're paying, you know, pretty decent money, pretty decent, you know, premiums for are just going to rot before the stock ever gets there. So, um, I would say any other market but this one, it it would not have a shot. But um, I think you know, <laughs> given how the thing the stock's moving, it's probably there in two days. Yeah. <laughs> and then they're Some, cashing out. Someone clearly thinks that. Let's see what you folks think, because it is time. It is Thursday. It is time to unleash the mail block. It's time to take your seat on the all-star panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for the mail block. All right, everybody, let's do it. Let's see how many of you we can squeeze onto the show. Here we got to. A comment, little love coming from Aston Crouch. He just says, thanks, Op- thanks, Options Insider. Great shows. And he, he adds an addendum here for some reason. He says, hope the Rock Lobster and Greasy Meatball are good. So uh, there you go. Mr. Rock Lobster, are you good? I don't know why you're getting love on my show here, but sure. I guess I, I, I guess Aston likes you. You, you know what? Because I, I, your listeners clearly think I deserve it, even though you, as the is the grand poobah of your uh, radio conglomerate, do not think so. See, the, the, the listeners don't throw umbrage at me. You throw umbrage at me. But the <laughs> listeners, they, they, they might like it. Clearly, they thought you needed some love. I guess you didn't, didn't think you got enough. So there you go. Aston, giving some love to the whole network, which we like and appreciate. And, of course, sure, throw a little love to the Rock Lobster and the Meatball. Why not? Speaking of love, Uncle Mike here. This one comes from you from Mr. Unlimited. He says, what is the best way to play Facebook to one trillion? As Uncle Mike says, the market likes clean numbers. A 351 will be one trillion dollars worth of market cap in Facebook. I bought the vert- I bought one vertical for the 350, 360 strikes in August for three dollars and five cents. Is it likely that it will get there by then? So Mr. Uncle Mike, I don't know how much you watch Facebook, but you were invoked in this question, so I will give you pride of place. Uh, you like, you, as you say, markets like kind of round numbers and new highs. So, Mr. Unlimited trying to play that one T level in Facebook. What are your thoughts on this on this strategy to do so, sir? I think it's a, it's pretty interesting because if, if I'm not mistaken, it was, he said 351. He says 351, yes. Yeah, I mean, we're not that far from that right now. 343 to 351, uh, 
we're, we're, we are getting fairly close. Uh, <clears throat> full disclosure, I mean, I don't personally trade Facebook. I mean, I, I shouldn't say that. Some, I have done some um, uh, some costless collars on it at times, but I mean, it's not something that I follow very closely. Um, but with it, I, I think that just depending on what your time frame is for it, uh, the first thing that I think of is that you should definitely take more time than you think you need you have to for it. So in other words, if you're going to buy a 350 call two months out, you may want to... My general rule of when I'm thinking that way is I like to go maybe three or four months out just to be safe. Um, but then the other thing with it, I would play it along the lines, and this is having not even looked at it at all and knowing absolutely nothing about the option pricing on it, but my tendency would be along the lines of perhaps buying two long calls at roughly the 350, 351 level and then selling one call in the near term. So in other words, let's say you go out, buy a call, buy the two calls, maybe three or four months out, and then the near term start selling uh, one lot calls. And by doing that, that way you're getting some of your juice taken care of and some of your juice is being paid for with the near term calls that you're selling against it. But let's say you just wake up one morning and Facebook is at 362. That way, you know, you can at least be a part of it. So I like the idea initially without even looking at this and not really having a position or an opinion for that matter on Facebook itself. Um, I do think it's a good long-term company, but in the near term, I don't really have much of an opinion on it. Um, I like the idea of doing a ratio calendar spread, if that is what you're looking to play. Ratio calendar. There you guys pull up your strikes here, Mr. Unlimited. It looks like that spread's trading for about four bucks. So you're, you're doing all right. You're not, you're not hurting right now. So it, it's moving in your direction. That's a pretty good move, given the fact that that's an AUG vertical. So it doesn't have a, a huge, huge delta to it. Uh, but yeah, interesting stuff. Let us know how that plays out out there. And don't worry, Mr. Rock Lobster, you're not uh, you're not ignored, even though you got love earlier. So I don't know how much more love you can get. But our regular listener, my boy Luigi, <laughs> loves throwing arrows at you, but also giving you some love. He says, I know the lobster is mostly a vol trader, and I can only hope that I can be in this game for as long as he is. Is there an advantage to focusing on vol trading instead of chasing the investment world? Yeah, I think there is a lot. I'll let Mr. Rock Lobster chime in on this. I know just really quickly for me personally, it's nice. When you could put on things, you could see, I've, I've joked on vol views how many times, but at the end of the day, the vol math is pretty straightforward. If there's not a lot of realized vol in the actual marketplace, then everything else is kind of gravy out there. So it makes, it does kind of boil things down to a much more bite sized understandable essence for a lot of people who, as you put it, Mr. Luigi, don't want to chase the rest of the madness. They want to focus on one thing that they can kind of lock their heads around. It may sound scary, it sounds intimidating, volatility, but when you break it down to brass tacks, the actual math going on there and the actual analysis is fairly straightforward. But Mr. Rock Lobster, it is your question, sir. I will let you dive into this one. Uh, yeah, I mean, so I think the, the the hardest, real simply, you have to separate your head from short-term trading and long-term investing, right? Okay, just look at the people that are long-term investors, okay, uh, Elon Musk, uh, Warren Buffett, um, uh, uh, Bill, like, you know, they buy stuff and they hold on to it forever and you make money. So you still want to be an investor um, and you, but you need to be a buyer when everybody else does not want to buy stuff. Okay. That's the easiest way to make money. And Tusa would tell you that you want to be a buyer when things are cheap. You know, you wanted to be a buyer last um, last year, um, when everybody gave me crap about selling those ridiculous puts that made a fortune. So, you know, it's, you, you have to, you have to be an invest, you have to have an investor hat, but you don't want your short term, a short term outlook or your long term outlook to get in the way of a short term trade because you go broke buying calls in the stock that you think is great. So what I found is, Trading vol is a great short-term vehicle because the moves in it and how you trade it, like Mike, uh, like Long Mark said, Longo said, is relatively. Um, it is a little bit more predictable in the way the products trade, um, and that and the edge that you can find in them for retail is is pretty good. Um, so, and another thing, and it makes a good hedge or hedge against for your an investing portfolio. Like, so if the ball blows up, 
you're closing the stuff that you own and you're going to take that money and you're going to try to buy stocks, hopefully that are on a discount. And unless we totally screw up our system of government and the U.S., generally stocks come back. So I think short term, I think it's easier to focus on the vol just because of how it trades and the things that it can do um, and the the edge that can be in there. Because I personally think a lot of the time um, volatility is underpriced at certain times, which makes it interesting to purchase. And then as soon as you make some money in it, you sell it back. Um, so that's kind of how I view that. So I, I still like trading stocks and I sell puts and I buy stock and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I don't get that. I don't let an investing framework get in the way of trying to put on a short term trade, like being overly aggressive short term, trying to sell puts in something and then really get run over and get hung with something that you really never <laughs> intended to be an investor in. But vol is great for that, being able to trade vol in the vol space. Um, is I think uh, great if you want to trade uh, short term because the dollars you can make when you have those vol reversions are relatively fast. Um, and when you when you get them, you uh, your dollars move from edge that you can see into dollars you can count. And when you have countable dollars trading vol, that's when you want to take them. So um, and again, that's my investing uh, or investing trading hypothesis and a or a theory in a nutshell for you a lot of that witness that this week <laughs> a lot of downside realized dollars in volatility out there this week really quickly it looks like a little unlimited thanks you mike for it putting on the calendar ratio he says i haven't done many of those i will compare it to the vertical and see what i learn he also adds uh hercules capital has only one open interest doesn't it mean it's just one person protecting their position? I'm not sure what you're talking about there, uh, Mr. Unlimited, because I'm looking at the open interest for HTGC right now, and they have over 13,000 contracts open. The top OI outside of today's trade, which will obviously be number one once it gets added to the OI, that was 5,000. But outside of that, the 17 halves in October and the 17 halves in July have about 3,300 and 2,800 respect, excuse me, respectively. So there's a lot more than one position open out here in in uh, HTGCs. I'm not sure what you're talking about there. So give us more details on that. If you want to join all these folks chiming in here on a regular basis, uh, you know how to do it. Just go on over to the options side of that plus or slash pro so you can join the live so you can get into the mix right away. Of course, if you remember, you can't make it live. You can always hit us up via the hotline there as well. Make sure your questions are answered on this show or, of course, our big pros Q&As, everything else we do here throughout the week. As we keep on rolling into our final segment, we're going to do kind of a combo around the block as well as uh, what you can look forward to coming up from us. All right, there it is. There's our outro music. Right, let's go around the horn. Let's start with the unclest of mics. Sir, really quickly, what are you watching for the rest of this week until and into the weekend until Monday. And then B, if folks are intrigued, they want to hit up Uncle Mike with some ratio calendars or anything else they want to talk about. Where should they go? What should they do? 4271.2 on the SPX. That's the all-time high we set today. Watching to see if we can break that. Uh, then I, if you are interested in working with a financial advisor who delves, I should say, obsesses, I should say, well, whatever you want to say, who works with the option product very frequently with his clients, follow me on Twitter at Mike Tusaw, T-O-S-A-W, or check out my website, www.stcharleswealth.com, uh, if you'd like to work with a financial advisor who works with the option product. There you go. At Mike Tusaw on the old Twitter, stcharleswealth.com are the places to go. And Mr. Rockingest of Lobsters, if folks want to reach out to you in between shows, A, how should they do it? And B, what can they find if they do? And C, what are you looking forward to throughout the weekend until Monday? Um, yeah, I'm, a couple things is uh, there's a, a slight thing is one of our fixed income, head fixed income guy is looking for uh, um, how gold is handled at OTC desk. There's a new uh, law of Basel 3 coming out. Um, uh, the 28th. So we'll see if there's any upheaval in gold from that. I think there might be. Um, see how that rolls. And what am I looking? I'm I'm looking for the 14 handle. Oh God, I said it, and now all of a sudden, uh, where are we gonna go? But oh, ex have... excuse me while I go buy some VIX calls. Now that you've said that, Ex uh, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I had to wait a whole week to sell mine. But for whoever was fading me, I hope they I hope they got out of whatever they own when they had their chance. Um, but 
again, I think, you know, just weekend effect and everything will probably submit 14 or something uh, by tomorrow. So there we go. And come on over to optionpit.com. Go to memberships. You can go have a spank of all ball trading club. I think what I got uh, the last 11 trades I've done or 13 trades. I only lost them two. So there might be something to this ball thing if you want to learn how to do it. Mark's kicking butt in the ball edge. Uh, the split, the UVXY split obviously has been a it's like the gift that never stops giving sometimes. So anyway, uh, hop on over to optionpit.com and put your ball, put your ball hat on. There you go. Put your ball hat on optionpit.com. And you don't have to take your trading hat off yet if you don't want to, because we got more stuff coming up for you. We'll be if you're listening live, we'll pump some fun. I think Brian just went live there with OPR. So we can put that to you fresh and hot right here in the live stream. If you're listening live, you listen after the fact. Just hit next. Because you have OPR there, but you also have coming up in a little bit, Twifo. I'll be chatting with uh, Mr. Rhodes, talking about all things volatility across a broad spectrum of products out there. So it should be pretty interesting. And of course, back again tomorrow, volatility views and then options oddities after that. Then we kick it all off again on Monday. Another episode of the Option Block. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com.